So my first six months was like a honeymoon. Uh, we showed up, we were told we would uh, enter a really, really busy uh, job here and Joanne and I embraced that and we jumped in to the deep end full force and it proved very much to be a real busy schedule but a lot of fun, very rewarding. Everything that people had described, uh, they told me that was a normal pace at the Naval Academy. Um, so we, we strapped that on and we said, okay, here we go and we'll get used to doing this and we'll do as best we can. And then I would suggest that the bottom fell out on that in February of 2020. And it wasn't with the onset of the pandemic. It was actually, I lost two midshipmen who passed away due to heart attacks and uh, midshipman Duke Carrillo and midshipman David Forney. And I will tell you that was devastating. Uh, I, Joanne and I consider all these young men and women here at the academy, our sons and daughters. And I feel as though I have a responsibility to their parents to look after them and care for them like a parent, to not only develop them and educate them, but to also watch over them. And when I lost two of them, uh, that was pretty crazy. We, we old people are supposed to pass before our children or before young ones. And then uh, just a few days after we buried David Forney, both those men were buried here in the, Annapolis, in the Naval Academy Cemetery. And just a couple of days afterwards, after we buried David, the, uh, the brigade went on their spring break. And we all knew that we needed a break. Joanne and I even headed off the yard uh, to a, a place that we enjoy going for our privacy and, and some downtime and time to think and time to heal, time to still grieve. Uh, and right in the middle of that spring break, this thing called the coronavirus, COVID-19 as it became uh, known to be, hit us. And that changed, uh, that changed the world, literally, pun intended, that changed the world but it changed our trajectory here at the Naval Academy. I would suggest to you as a superintendent at this role, where it had the most impact is it completely caused me to reset my strategic priorities for the Naval Academy. I had initially come in, I listened, I learned, I asked questions and after about a hundred days here, I had developed my four strategic priorities that I would intend to focus on during my four year journey here. Um, and those were flipped upside on its head. And I had to completely re-wicker and, and rethink what my strategic priorities would be to run the Naval Academy, uh, to keep it the premier accession source that it is for the Navy and the Marine Corps. And I came up with a new set of eight strategic priorities and I'm using the word strategic, but what they turned out to be were tactical priorities. They were the here and now, what do we need to do at this very moment to stay open and to be safe and to keep all of us healthy, but continue down the road of educating, graduating and commissioning. So a huge change, not a small change, a huge change. And then we lived with those strategic priorities for about a year and a half. And then I'm very, very proud to tell you, and we all feel lucky as we exited out of COVID, I reinstituted my original four strategic priorities. And that's how I've been working with the senior leader team to move our Naval Academy ahead. Uh, I was hell bent that we were not going to close because the American public never expects its military to take a knee to any adversary. And in this particular case, the adversary was uh, health related. It was a virus, something that we couldn't see, we didn't know much about, except for the, the epidemiologists, the medical experts knew about it. But the rest of us needed to listen and learn. But my, my commander intent that I gave the team was we're staying open, how do we do it safely? And how do we stay on timeline? We're not gonna delay anything. Why we enjoy such a, a high graduation rate is because of the generosity and philanthropy of so many people 
that now allow us to, to uh, give resources to the midshipmen to help them. Resources that didn't exist in, in decades of past. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place. If you ask for help, you will receive help and we'll, we want you to graduate. We want you to commission and we're gonna give you a chance. We still enjoy um, a, and uh, the ability to, to go find and encourage the finest young men and women in this country to serve their country and to do it through coming to the Naval Academy to, to earn their commission and earn their degree. And we need to continue to be able to advertise ourselves as such, as an institution that will have the ability to do that. We enjoy a four-year graduation rate. That's something that hardly any school in this country has now. Many, many institutions of higher education advertise a five-year or a six-year graduation rate. Not your service academies. We, we do it in four years. It's hard. And we have the resources now to help you, and we need to per those to persist. That's the way we're going to continue to encourage talent in the years moving forward as we compete for talent. So I'm bookending 44 years with four years at the academy up front as a mid and four years at the end as the superintendent. And I have a very different perspective. The perspective of, of a midshipman is very different than the perspective as a superintendent. And now what I've learned is the joy of the Naval Academy is the presence of midshipmen. Maybe the joy of the Naval Academy when you are a midshipman is getting off the yard and going and doing your summer training, going on leave, spending time outside the, the walls because while you're a midshipman, it, it's tough. It's a grind. Uh, there's high expectations on you. But I can tell you now as an adult and as soup and looking back on it, uh, this place is joyful when the midshipmen are here. I am very, very proud of my class. I'm very grateful for the support, the love uh, that I've gotten from all of them. They rallied around me in trying times. They came and celebrated with me and Joanne during good times. Um, it, the, the unity of my class grew during my four years here as soup. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that part of that growth and uh, camaraderie and unity between all of us uh, was attributed to Joanne and I by being able to host them, be able to encourage them to come home to the academy to, to re reunite with one another and have fun. We did that often, as often as we could amongst the, the COVID delays. Um, by circumstance, one of my classmates, Steve Shatansky, through a neighbor and a friend out in California, uh, came through Dwight Manley and we found the bell, the ship's bell off the SS Central America, which now was donated to us by Mr. Manley and now a part of the historic yard. It has a wonderful plaque associated with it that we can now tell every tourist, every midshipman, anyone who pauses to read about who Commander Bill Herndon was, what he stood for. They now have a much better understanding of why we uh, midshipmen, why all of us alumni climb Herndon. It's a long story. I, I, I won't share it here in our interview, but I encourage everyone when they walk on the yard and come back and visit, stop by and see the Herndon Bell, read a little bit about Bill Herndon and you'll have a really fine appreciation of why we do one of the most iconic events and ceremonies that we do as we uh, wrap up our plebe year by climbing Herndon. The class of 1983 has buried a time capsule next to that bell and uh, we're pretty excited to, to know that the class of 2083 will be invited to dig up our time capsule uh, as they come into the Naval Academy and look back at all of the history and the legacy that we left behind. And maybe that will inspire them to continue the legacies for their class and classes to come so that the Naval Academy is here for, for centuries to come. I will, uh, I will transition out of uniform um, after, after my service of 44 years. Uh, we have fallen in love with Annapolis. We've made many great friends. We love every single aspect of Naval Academy life. 
we're excited to learn more about historic Annapolis that we haven't necessarily had the time to do so. So we've, we've chosen to settle here. We've bought a house in the local area. We're also looking to transition down to the state of Florida. So we'll probably have a footprint in both places and come and go uh, from Florida to Maryland. We have children in both those places. So I, I think it's safe to say that the Naval Academy family and the Annapolis family here will see Joanne and Sean Buck for years to come.